Hello, welcome back to We Were Rooting For You, the podcast that answers the question, do you want to be on top? I am game <laughs> I'm just saying, you're just weird. laughing because you realize that you don't. Yeah, no, it sounds like a lot Not of work. Not in bed or on no. top model. No, you don't want to do that for sure. Same these girl. <laughs> this is why we host this together. <laughs> we share the responsibility of having to be on top because it is a huge, heavy burden to just be doing something for the sake of modeling. I know, bottoming is so much easier. Oh God, you can just lay there. <laughs> I don't want to just lay there, but nonetheless, we're here to talk about Top Model. I'm Gambit Magazine contributing TV editor, though maybe not after this podcast <laughs> for much longer, Mark Bard, and I am joined by my trusty sidekick, Samir Roy, fellow contributing editor to Gambit Magazine. Mm, my, my, my. Container Yard uh, Shipping Yard finally comes to fruition at the beginning of this episode, I, and the pun tastic title gives away the entire show just immediately. Oh yeah, and then it turns out it didn't. But yeah, a double twist. Oh Tyra. So basically, she just you lied she to double. us. And we got another jumpsuit this episode. Oh my god, another hideous one. I, but she hasn't mentioned if she designed them though. <sighs> I'm gonna think not because she usually would make a big deal about what mm-hmm. she. She always loves to promote herself and everything she does and. God, you know if there was a jumpsuit line coming out to anywhere, like Zappos Couture. Oh, yeah. One might say, she would be promoting the fuck out of it. We already saw Miss J's new shoe line. And had that a made little, sense. Had a little, sh- a little shout out today, which was actually the best part of the whole episode. Because it's like, good for you, Miss J. It's about time you started capitalizing on this fucking franchise that I know. you've been a part of for way too long. You're the runway diva. You might as well have, uh, there might be shoes fit for a runway diva. They should be, and those Runway Diva shoes should be worn by amateur models on your reality show as a free plug. I was going to say, that's what, you know, maybe it's a trade-off, because he does have to watch these, like, you know, untrained, unwashed amateurs clod hopping all over the runway in his fabulous Runway Diva shoe line. What was the name of the line? If there, I think it was just Miss J's shoes. Or just Miss J. I remember Miss J was involved in the name of it. But I think that the one upside is perhaps there is a diamond in the rough that could end up being a very cheap Miss J model for her shoe line. So I think all in all, Miss J wins. But tonight's episode, the guy who gets shipped out, we need a moment of silence because Joan Bryan Crawford is with us no more. I know. Maybe that was the guy who got shipped out that we were really sad about. Because, frankly, he looked he was an underwear model who looked good in underwear. And I was Ooh, but his more... runway walk, imaginary or not. Because there was... So... Just the look Where of people, like, start fake with walking this... through the air like they're still walking on a runway and modeling at the same time. I hoping feel like that, that they needs don't a fall. little context. Like, that was... I mean, yeah, yeah, like... The, the reason so, they're up in up there in the container shipping, sh- yeah, shipping container, whatever the hell you want to call it, the container yard, and with that runway, be- like, you know, balance on top of them, that only goes halfway to the next stack of containers. And then you have to walk on an imaginary runway while you're suspended midair, controlled by some unseen person. I still say that it was Tyra sitting in front of a giant big button just waiting to smack it. <laughs> Like, for every person. And like I don't doubt pers- it, because Miss J and then that really short guy from Next Model Management that keeps showing up during, during these, like, very strange oh God, initial Next runways. indeed. Go away. But remember when he showed up to the Silly String runway? Yes. He And the EDM selfie whatever one Whoa. of last cycle. So he shows up, gets these horrible first impressions of these models that are all at once, like, terrified, confused, and very inexperienced. And then he makes really wild judgments based upon that. But... Him and Miss J were the ones that were commentating while they were walking literally through thin air across from the shipping container. I don't even... Did we get how many feet up in the air it was? I don't know. It looked like, like they were stacked at least like three four, containers high. Three, three four, four high. So I think it's about 30 feet at least. So about 30 feet up in the air. And then they have about, let's say, like six to ten feet to get across to the other platform where if you make it, you're safe. If you suck it up at some point, you get dropped. And yeah, Miss J... Dude from Next Model Management didn't control it. They seemed more or less surprised when some dude named fucking Miguel didn't make it. But I was, was just that the surprised. guy with the curly hair who looked kind of like um actually I don't think I have many cultural references for that look. It just se- it no, I don't think I do. It looked like he was wearing the outfit, like we were just talking about Legally Blonde earlier, and like I just remember that scene where there was like the pool boy that supposedly Brooke Wyndham was on trial for 
like she was on trial for murdering her husband and the pool boy was one who was like, oh, she was having an affair with me, but he was obviously gay, which, I mean, anyone could have told from the outfit he was wearing because it was so stereotypically, like, flashy sequins, like, I don't know. It, it, it was, like, that kind of, like, gaudy, tacky outfit. Well, I mean, just to give you guys a little bit girl. of reference, all the dudes had some weird, like, bandolet strap with no shirt on and, like, a weird leather Mad max e sort of jacket i don't know some of them were dusters which i do not approve of but mm. some were like shorter jackets all of these were clothes you would never wear in public Ever. like very ill-fitting leather pants like i felt bad for that dude dallas like his outfit was not cute no most of them were not cute and it, like it wasn't like i don't know i felt like so confusing like they're all like I'm like, are they cheering because they didn't die or because they made it to the made it I into think, the competition? I think it's a little bit of both. A little it has to be. So they whittled it down to have the accurate amount of models to beds. So they have fourteen models. I mean thirteen by the end of this episode. Oh but, yeah. You know, they got rid they trimmed a little bit of the fat. They got rid of some dude named Gage that I had no I idea. I didn't even was know there. was there. He is the stan of True Detective Season 2. Who the fuck is Gage? No one will know. I don't know, but his bed just became purse storage. <laughs> Gage, Miguel, and some chick named India. India. I was like, a very no, dramatic I, time. I know. She like, I'm like, girl, you just literally cried your way into being eliminated. Oh, she, she just immediately covered her face, started crying, and... Miss Jay's yelling like, "Just put your hands down. Just pose a little bit." And she just couldn't. She, she was could. just, she just she kept lost crying, it. and it's like, "Well, you wanted to get on the ground. Well, now you are. And guess what that means? That means you can tulu walk yeah. off home." But Joan Bryant Crawford, I, I, I mean, his walk that. was super stiff. He's just so bulky, and he well, looks I mean, very short. Devin's he walk short. was literally Quotes. him like. It looked almost like he was doggy paddling in the air. He in was. A way. Well, they told him to run at one point, which was really just him like <coughs> running in place, like you said, doggy paddling in the air. Like he was stair mass. He was mastering invisible stairs like a demon or something. I, I, I don't understand. And not only that, how are they moving forward? They're not actually walking on anything. So clearly, like the person in control of this thing is just very slowly edging them forward. I'm like, you know, if someone's clearly in distress, well, you just drop them. Pretty much. But I feel like a lot of the ladies figured that out pretty quick, that there's no point in trying to, quote unquote, walk the rest of this invisible mid-air runway. And all of them just ended up posing. And I feel for the most part, that worked for everybody, like Mame, who... Mame! <laughs> like Timmy! <laughs> That's just how I hear it in my I head know, when you say I know, I but then, right it, then we get like five seconds of dead air because I'm laughing. <laughs> just laugh out loud. We'll incorporate it. Uh, uh, who ended up winning and is still in the Tyra suite from this challenge. Uh, she was just posing fiercely and that was her quote unquote walk across. But I don't know what they were selling. I don't know what they were doing. Even in the photo shoot challenge, which we'll get to in a minute. What were they selling? I don't think they were selling anything. I think they were, they were just selling Tyra. Are they just selling Tyra? Like, their fear is meant to sell Tyra. Their joy is meant to sell Tyra. Tyra is the product. Tyra is everything. Well, of all of the eliminated models that we'll miss, it's mainly just going to be Joan Bryant Crawford, who I'm sure had a lot of hilarious things to say. They probably had a lot more, like, really sexy pieces of underwear to model, too. I mean, like, that's his whole career, isn't it? I mean, we can just he's, follow him on Instagram he's he's a, not, since he's apparently Instagram famous. I was going to say he's not moving on to re legitimate modeling and clothes at this point. So I guess that's all he's got. Oh, you know, follow him on Instagram. I don't know what his Instagram handle is, but I'm sure you can find If it's find not him. Joan Bryant Crawford, it you should, should fix be. that right away. Change that now. Bryant. At least we know his name is Bryant. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it won't be hard. We'll just enter in like Bryant plus, oh no, plus underwear would probably be He will be forever Joan Bryant Crawford in my mind. R.I.P. <laughs> I mean, on this show. You're on this show, you're, dead. yes, you're alive and well. And I don't know what it is you're doing at this moment. <laughs> I suppose I could Google you, but you know, I'm kind of busy. Just this. enjoy living a life not confined to... To the Tyra mansion. Yeah, I which mean, is full of fights already. Yeah, like people already hate each other. Bello or Bayo or Bejo, as Tyra how, keeps saying. How do you And he's not his confirming name? which one of these is correct. He's just not telling anybody they're wrong. 
<laughs> and he's like, I gave up so much to be in this competition. I'm like, wait a minute, didn't you say you were homeless? Doesn't that mean you literally gave up nothing to be in this competition? You actually you sort gained, of gained a bunch. You gained a bed. And you gained a, roof. a house, and you gained a paycheck, and, and you gained some crafty. Yeah. Which, if you're really crafty and smart, you can kind of squirrel away a bunch of like those granola bars that are probably always set up. For oh the yeah. Crew. Oh, you just need. To you can just like gather up all those Costco muffins. Like, just start. <laughs> gathering you're, you're set, supplies man. for your inevitable boot off this show. He's he's kind of creepy. I I can't. There's something off. Maybe not creepy, but there's something else underneath those very clear fake. blue eyes that kind of like I, I feel uncomfortable by. Maybe it is just the clear blue blue and eyes. And his hair looks kind of greasy. I cannot wait for tie overs next week. I'm kind of getting super ahead of myself, but he needs a haircut like really bad. Really bad. I mean, I mean, we have no idea. It could be like. Seriously, it could be a situation where, like, nothing, like, a good haircut and a nice wash and, you know, condition will, like, oh, damn. I mean, I'm not saying cutting all of it off, but it's just the long hair doesn't suit him, and it doesn't suit Mikey. Well, did you see that Instagram picture that Tyra posted of him? No. She's like, she's like, my baby. And it's, like, this shot of Mikey with, like, all his long hair, like, fanned out, like, filling the frame. It Like, it's a pretty amazing shot. Like, it's great hairography, as they would have called it on RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. um, it was some pretty impressive hairography on film. Uh, but I was like, baby? My best my best girl, Steph, was like, baby? Really? This guy's your baby. Um, are you ruining the ending of the show? Tie tie? Oh, God. Or she's banging Please him. Please don't. I, banging him seems much more likely because she does seem to have terrible taste in men. Actually, I wasn't even sure that her taste in men was like fully human. Because I've never... Ha when was the last time she actually dated a guy publicly? She had that thing with Drake a long time ago, like a year or two ago. They well, went to like hot. Disneyland together or something. Notice I just said he was hot. I'm not commenting on the quality of his music. So if you no, like but, or dislike him, everyone out there, um, just... I'm just you know, stating don't get facts, at me about but... It. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. Mikey's just gross, and he's in the long hair category that needs... Because, I mean, he proves later on in this episode to be a truly gross person on the inside as well as the outside. Yeah, he, like, tries to fool us all when, like, Courtney Well, he tried crying. to fool no one because he already straight up said he has a checkered family pass with... It sounds like... The environment in which he was raised in, you should not be surprised by the quality of character that he ended up having. And displaying for us on the show. Yeah, I mean, whether or not it's edited together easily, you still provided the material of which to cobble this together. So, anyway, the photo challenge ended up being having the models, getting them paired off with, it was boy-girl pairs, obviously. Yeah. And they were going to be bound together by various... I don't know, ropes and small belts yeah, it was and like, Christmas lights. Yeah, some people, Christmas lights, skinny belts, ropes, braids. Ooh, but before we get started. And barbed wire. And barbed wire, but which I questioned the. It's probably not real barbed wire. I was going to say, it was probably I'm like the fake sure that's illegal. You can't do that. You can't bind people with barbed wire. You're going to give them tetanus. You can't give them tetanus. Or wounds of any kind, really. Are you allowed to just wound people? You for can't. A photo I know shoot? they sign away a lot in that contract, but they you do can't. sign away their lives. But you can't, like, you can't kidnap them. I don't know. It looks, it looks bad. I don't think that that. It was you can't fake bind them wire. in that sense. But before they get started on their photo shoot, Tyra, of course, because she loves to do this every cycle, gives oh, a yeah. closed tutorial. To all of the model testants. Of course, this is a thinly veiled a test to see if you're actually listening to every single word that she's saying and then immediately applying it to the photo shoot. Which is smart because you have to test whether or not they can, I don't know, receive instructions and then apply them to day to, day, to their modeling life to not make you look bad later in the future. So she gives, every cycle she focuses on, you know, booching and tooching, which is all about your butt and your stomach. And she's done, what else has she done? Like, trying to look tall for the short model series. Um, it's like some little gimmicky, like... It's always a gimmick, and she's always got a bunch of made-up names that we'll, I will end up using way too much for the rest of this podcast, so well, yeah, she gives watch us out. a whole glossary of model necks, as it were. So we've got what, like... Well, so, of course, there's always a backstory that involves Tyra, and this is the whole reason what it, it's the reason that is inspired. It's the reason for the season that she's giving you this model tutorial. This season, it's because 
she got called a no-neck monster, which she, this is a term that she already frequently uses with models as a critique. As like don't be a no-neck Will. monster. Don't, and with Will. Will last season was the no-neck monster, and then she's like, and then he became a beautiful giraffe. But she called it the Willie Hunch first. When the he, Willie Hunch. But also, to be fair, when he got freezing cold water dumped on him, if your immediate instinct is to not hunch over because you're fucking cold, I don't know. I don't think that's your hunchback of Notre Dame coming out. Hunchy do, I think that's another term she hunchy used do. for. Hunchy She likes to add a doozy do, or she likes uh. to add an ey, like a cutesy kind of sound at the end of things sometimes. But it was all about being a no neck monster and how to avoid that. So she gave us a bunch of glossary terms related to animals this season. And of course, there's always a good no-neck monster and a bad no-neck monster. But then she said that the good no-neck monster wasn't actually a no-neck monster. Right after she called it a good no-neck monster. I can't remember which one that was. A horse. That was the horse. It was the horse. That horse was which the good no-neck monster, least sense not because no-neck monster. The owl made sense. I'll give her the fucking owl. The horse made no no real sense to me. How is that a no-neck monster? I don't understand. Well, she and then started it wasn't saying, even like a good description of it. She started saying something in the effect of like looking over your shoulder with your hair covering your neck. Yeah, but only like people with long hair. That would only apply to people with long hair, wouldn't it? Yeah, I would assume so. But I, I don't know how that applies to everybody else. <sighs> Yeah, it was it was strange, and like they weren't even like at this at this point when they were taking doing these all these photos, they weren't even pretending when we actually finally saw them later on. They weren't even pretending to be like, oh yeah, we actually like picked like a really good photo of both of you. Like no, they literally like admit like when they're like, oh yeah, we didn't have any good pictures of her, so we chose this one where she was good. Unfortunately for you, dude, you know I I have you dudes here because I want to change this thing in modeling where it's all about women, but I'm gonna unnecessarily hamper you. With girls who apparently don't know how to follow instructions or find their light, and then pick what the one picture where they did, and which unfortunately is one where you did not do so well. Even though, like the rest of the shoot, they're like, "You're looking great, Hadassah. You are sucking it up big time. Can you not do that?" And she had an omen back during the pose tutorial segment before oh, yeah. they started pairing them off. And Hadassah was an, unfortunately for Dustin, they were paired together. But she already had a hard time just simply looking over her shoulder and kind of just lifting her chin up just a little bit. I forget which or animal. Or not hiding her was face it the in the owl? shadow. Was it the owl that she was like unable to complete? Or the giraffe? I don't know. But everybody else seemed to grasp these concepts. The dudes were super into it. Stefano even tells Hadassah, well, we should probably do, a, even though they weren't paired together, but... I think it was more like a royal we. Mm -hmm. uh, we should be using the poses that we just learned because Tyra just took the time to teach them to us one on one, which is which like the whole like, point of this entire show. I was saying, like, it doesn't seem like the most mind blowing, like you know. Um, it doesn't feel like he cracked. Idea. He's not it, Alan Turing. He didn't crack any fucking code. Like it literally just happened right before now. So it's like. Um, well, of course, that was like the last thing that you. But Adasa's brilliant comeback is. I don't like to use my brain on these kind of things. That oh was her God. excuse. Like, I, I, maybe she was, like, I'll give her, no, I won't give her the benefit of the doubt because that was a really stupid don't way even. to express it. But, you know, I get the idea that, like, oh, you can't think consciously when you're performing in any way. Like, you have to have some tiny element of it, but really you kind of have to just let yourself go and not think about how you look or think about how you're, you know, are coming off. But you just kind of have to do it. You have to just... That's enabling you to feel it, and when you feel it, it just shows. And if you don't feel it, we can tell. And obviously, Hadassah was not feeling it because I was not buying it anywhere at all. She I just mean, of course, confused. Yeah, she looked very confused, and she kept, even just to find her light. It's just like look where the fucking light is. That's I'm like, finding you know your when light. your face is in a shadow and when it's not. Like you can tell the difference. So why do you? Keep and then her excuse at panel ended up being. I'm just learning modeling terms, and so I don't like these know aren't even real terms, means. honey. They're not even terms. They're just words that you know that you use every day. That if you get a little bit of context, like say you're in a fucking photo shoot where there are hot lights and a camera, when someone says "look towards the light with your face and look at the camera with your eyes," those are basic instructions. Those that's are not, not terms. It's not groundbreaking. But it's even not if hard. she was talking about what Tyra was like talking about, I'm mean, like. First of all, I hope you don't go out into the modeling world and, like, start saying things like, oh, yeah, I have a really great giraffe neck. Like, no, people don't want to hear that. They just want you to, like, actually look good and be malleable to their 
to you just have arms. to have this in the back of your head. You don't say it out loud. I mean, you can't say it, like dudes wouldn't be able to tell a photographer like I'm doing the gorilla pose. That's not a thing you want to say. Are you looking on for set. an owl neck on this shoot or like what is it you want? Or a gowl I where I do a giraffe and, and an, an owl. owl that's what Tyra together. calls it. I mean, that's what it. Gowl. That's the right word, right? That's what that's what professional people say and that's out loud. When correct? being a member of Next Model Management comes in handy, because he will not be shocked when the word "next" is uttered to him <laughs> after it's, those words. It's unsurprising that that's who they be modeled managed by. Anyway, so on to um, better people who did fair, who did probably middling to fair on well, their photo she shoot. She didn't seem to like Nile. They didn't seem to like Nile much in this photo shoot. But who was he paired with? Was Delaney, she who ended up going good. home. I mean, they were just not that good together, but I also felt like they weren't very well directed. I mean, like, it's another case of, like, obviously we come to see a little bit more of the human side of Yutsai. We haven't yet seen the really good photo shoot director side of Yutsai yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we've given him more than a season to get there, and I don't think we're going to see that side any, ever. I miss actually. Johnny Wujek. I, I don't, but <laughs> I never wanted him there. In the, I, who I miss is... Paulina Poroskova, and Janice Dickinson. And maybe, no, not Jay Alexander. I never liked him either. Yeah, that's about it. What about Nigel? Oh, well, duh. I mean. Who doesn't? That goes without saying. I don't know what he looks like now, but he's still got to be gorgeous. He's still doing the face. I don't even know if the face is still a thing, but we can't talk about the face on this. This is America's Next Top Model. Well, it clearly lost out to Tyra's show in the end. You so cannot actually, defeat the Tyra juggernaut. So Tyra actually won a battle against Naomi, and I think she should be happy about it. Yeah, but she lost the battle of the hair. Because, yeah, well... The ugh. haircut is, oh my goodness, it it's is It's very hard. Justin Bieber meets <laughs> Kate, what's her name, from... Kate, Kate plus eight? eight? Yeah, I don't even know what her name is. It doesn't have is. the back, like, upturned, Spiky, like, peacock... Yeah thing or whatever it is or cockatoo it was a cockatoo and it doesn't have the like ryan seacrest basement price dye job thankfully but it's just as ugly it does not work honey it just does not work i just don't like it i mean honestly you can do with the jumpsuit or you can do the haircut but you can't do both and you can barely do the haircut yeah well you're being very generous I'm in a giving mood. I had a beard earlier. <laughs> so I'm in a good mood. So Niall and Delaney, and Delaney ended up going home, and she is the contestant who was chubs and then lost a bunch of weight and has a hard time modeling the lower half of her body because she's not used to showing it off. And even though the picture that they ended up picking they for They didn't the, show her lower body. <laughs> and I thought that her face looked pretty fierce. I, I'm struggling to understand still how she... I know, she, Hadassah stayed. And the, the worst part was when Hadassah was giving her photo and the tower was like, now, did you learn your lesson? Show me giraffe. Turn left. Find your light. Turn, like... And she okay, failed. And then she failed completely and Tyra even was like, hey, I guess that's kind of... And like, I regret this instantly. It was like running through her head. You could just see it. She was like, oh dear, what have I done? And Kelly actually made her first intelligent and productive comment about that which now was, you're I, really being generous well she actually said like this is gonna be a tough t tough case about Hadassah and I was like yeah I think you're voicing what everyone is thinking right now in the entire room and that is saying a lot when you've got someone like Devin who does the weird twitch like lip thing and who like, they thought was the best this week he did he did better in his couple shoot with Ashley? But he has such... It, I didn't... I mean, I don't know. I did not see I think it was because his eyes were closed. Saying. I swear to God. It was it's because his eyes were closed. It's the weird shape of his face. It's almost like... I don't know. It's like it's so thin, even face on. It's, you know, like three inches wide. It just looks like an alien face. And it's not like even an attractive, like, you know, like quirky, beautiful kind of model face. It's just awkward looking. It's disproportioned for sure. He's got some googly eyes, which is why I say... The photo turned out better than you would have think because he's always so twitchy and like his eyes look at like they both go in like different directions. Like one eye is like on the TV and the other one is like watching something that's happening outside or something. Like he's not all there. But with his eyes closed, he actually looked like the most serene and peaceful I think he's ever looked in the entire three episodes we've gotten to know him in. But still. And I don't know what they saw I, I personally am shocked that he's best, best photo i think a lot of weird decisions happened in this third episode here but that's what happens when kelly catrone is involved with anything 
I don't know if it was all Kelly with Devin. It's just the influence of her being in the room. It just like it just like brings out the bad juju on the judging panel. I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that Tyra keeps Kelly around because it makes her taste level look better. And you know, it's kind of like the classic case of like you know keeping someone who's less attractive than you next to you to make you look better. Yeah, fit, she's the duff. Terms. She's the designated fat friend. Yeah, she's not really fat, but but you know what I mean. You get the general. But that same idea. Yeah. Like she kind so, of deliberately cultivates that like really um not polished look of hers. But I really just don't understand how Devin got best photo. I really I don't understand what's happening there. It's Tyra just trying to sell like the artsy thing, you know, with the and modeling. And it's not. But I also, still don't think it's selling. It was like them. she was like it was supposed to be her perfect story arc because it uh, began with like oh my god he's the last one to go. We've been talking about it the entire time before he gets off the half runway from shipping container to shipping container in the sky and. Oh my god, the person before him looked absolutely terrible goes down, and they only have 13 people, and clearly they're going to have 14 because there's 14 beds, but they keep telling him, it's not guaranteed, it's not guaranteed, and then he's all biting his nail, but they totally wrote this whole thing. So it was supposed to be like, oh, first he was like almost eliminated, and then he won the photo shoot. Yeah, I think that's also part of what feels so cloying about it, is it's very obviously orchestrated by See, so that's why I couldn't give it a five stars, even though they had that insane, ridiculous runway thing going on. It's amazing how you can start that high and then fall so low, like with those eliminated contestants at the beginning. R.I.P. Joe Crawford. <laughs> JBC Joan Brian Crawford uh, yeah I was not impressed by that photo but I was impressed by Lacey I will say that I mean yeah. she had Bejo Belo Bello whatever your name is can we just call him B uh, Big B Big B Little B Little B he's kind of small I call him old fake blue eyes old fake blue eyes alright so fake blue eyes was paired up with Lacey, but no matter, I didn't even see him in that photo. Lacey worked it. I thought that she, her photo turned out very nice. I thought so, too. I definitely thought that she deserved top three, which is where she ended up kind of towards the top. And she got a nine for her challenge score. And this season, there are no social media scores I'm going to miss tabulated. some of those videos, though. Like I'm telling ridiculous you. ridiculous videos. I know. The video comments were, they were pretty great. Because you got a wide range of people. Some some people that would submit video comments actually in actual like written comments that I guess they take from Facebook. Probably. I don't really know. Facebook but, or the website or one of those. However, they were uh, we never really quite figured out whenever by the time we figured out that they were doing casting, they had already closed the voting submission yeah. and user submitted comment portion. You have to like I mean, I I do love this show and I do follow it in the press, but I always make it a point not to look at the photos and vote on anything no. as, before the season. I'm like, I feel like it takes away a lot of the fun, and then you can also even do the simple math of, like, figuring out who the top three is. It's like, okay, we get to the, Yeah, exactly. Basically, when they stop showing photos and they've eliminated 11 people, I'm like, oh, who were the three people that weren't eliminated? Them. But I will miss the various social media comments that they would read, and then also have the model testants read, which was always hilarious. But it, it always ranged from, like, people that actually sounded like, you know, they kind of knew what they were talking about in terms of, like, critiquing the pose. And mm. then you'd have, like, the off-the-wall parrot lady who would submit the video comments with, like, the parrot in the background as yes. she was talking. I will miss you, parrot lady. Mm. Long live parrot lady on America's Next Top Model <laughs> video comment section. Um, they are no more. I mean, maybe she has a YouTube page. What well, one can only hope. I can maybe just go look back in the Facebook comments at on America's Next Top Models true. Facebook Facebook page. But they've gotten rid of it. I can't say I'm gonna miss the social media component of this show at all. So there won't be that like mysterious countdown, like which one of you two will it be? It's they still like, had that. Really? But I mean they already we, okay, You I'm, don't see the score. Oh well, we see the scores on the T V as the people come yeah. up. But like I'm just like, um but I kinda miss the little jumbly numbers thing. That still happened, though. Did it really? Yeah, it did. Uh, it didn't have the same dramatic effect it once had. I really didn't care. Maybe because the people who were on the bottom... It was Stefano the misogynist and Delaney, the chick who we barely become attached to. And we knew to. that the, like, the, the one who was more dramatic was the one who was going to go. The one who was more dramatic in terms of like being a douchebag. Oh yeah, he's stuck around. He's still there. Stefano. The nice people who have actual like kind of issues, like I guess... Well, like she's overweight. She lost the weight, though. She lost the weight. 
And so she's just getting used to having, like, you know, somebody who has a nice And I love story. Tyra's, like, backhanded compliment as to why, she, like, he, Stefano ended up staying is, you know, she wants to fight, like, the stereotypes of, like, boy modeling and wants to prove A boy that, modeling being accessories to women in modeling, which is exactly what he did in the photo shoot. And then that's the reason that she chose him, because she didn't well, want to Well, she didn't want to pick another that. pretty face in Delaney. She wanted to. She would rather have a boy who's a misogynistic douchebag who can't even take a good photo anyway, than have like a nice chick that could probably actually have a decent real career in modeling. It just makes no sense. I mean, if her well, state it makes is sense in the scheme of reality TV, but I mean, like in terms of but a business what she sense, it's a to, stupid fucking move. Or what she says she hopes to accomplish, it's like she just did the exact opposite of accomplishing that. Yeah. Just keeping a dude in there isn't accomplishing it. No, you said. So, what you did in this picture is what I want to change in the industry. That's why I kept you. Wait, what? Like, but you just told us that he's, like, doing the thing that you want men, male models not to do and not to be. Well, I guess so she's going to break him of this habit. She's not going to break him of anything. Of course except she's Except maybe not. his spirit. Hopefully she breaks his spirit. That guy sucks. Yeah, he was a jerk. And so was the other, what's the name, Jay Smooth? Oh, Justin. Justin, Jay Smooth, slash Jay Smooth. He's I will admit that I was impressed. I mean... He is beautiful. I'm not saying he's not beautiful. But, you know, uh, I don't like the ugly inside. Ugly inside oh, yeah. makes but me look ugly But at least he outside. wasn't on the Stefano level of like... Oh, I was I'm, coaching her backstage. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to lead this photo shoot. Just, just listen to me. Well, clearly, you should have listened to yourself and thought about yourself and not tried to like put your weird, gross skis all over someone else who clearly doesn't need your fucking help. I think it's funny that we all instantly do like frat bro voice and we like hate the men and we're imitating them. <laughs> we just keep doing that every single time. Like, there's got to be one decent frat guy out there who speaks like that. Who speaks like that? I don't know. I... Don't totally know, but I didn't really. Hang I out know with that frat there are bros. decent frat bros, but I, not that have that voice. Not that talk like that. <laughs> Do any of them really talk like that? Some, and like they never, are the worst kind. Because that's what I mean. That's like the personality, obviously, that we associate with these particular men in this show. So I guess that's we're expressing it through that voice. But uh, for all the nice frat bros who do speak like that, I apologize. If you are actually a really sweet guy. We're not trying to besmirch your character. It's just the only voice we got. It just sprung instantly to mind. But Jay Smooth is definitely less of a douchebag than Stefano. Even with the name Jay Smooth. I don't know. Something about his character just uh, screams asshole to me. And I didn't really get a different vibe from him. Regardless, he, he still ended up in top three. And I did like his photo with Mom A. It was a little eh. It was a nice, like, profile shot. But I do agree with the judges that it, I mean, they were in two separate photos. They weren't yeah. in a photo together. But I think they were nice photos Not of like them individually. Not like Courtney and Mikey. <sighs> that was some white trash, die ant word realness And, happening. like, he knows how to play his game. He's like, I need you to be good in this photo shoot. So I'm just going to pretend to be a nice guy right now to get you, like, in the spirit of this photo shoot so we do awesome. But, so can we and talk as soon about... as it's over... Wait... Back up, though. Can we talk about what made her upset to begin with? Because suddenly she just disappeared. And she started she was... crying, and she said that she was not feeling well. Uh -huh. She said she was feeling sick to her stomach. I don't know if it was just the nerves making her sick to her stomach or not, but that was what she said was the issue. And she was crying. But it seems like before that, she was talking about how she's, like, she's so new to modeling, and she feels kind of out of place, and she was, like, very... Obviously, they were talking... They've been talking one of the other running themes of this episode was her confidence level and the problem she has with her confidence level. And they even included, like, a small, like, moment of Tyra being like, oh, see, look how good that was. Kind of, like, her, like, going slightly out of her way to be encouraging to show, that, like, oh, yes, I see that you are insecure and I'm trying to tell you that you don't have to be. It was, like, a little tiny flash of that that I saw that I felt was, like, trying to set up this storyline that's going to continue further mm -hmm. of her continuing to not be confident in herself but then somehow still rocking, like, perfect model face, face, skimpy face, like, in every photo. Because right. she did it again in the photo, but, like, Mikey came over and, like, it's like, oh, why are you upset? Let me let me calm you down and make you feel good so we can do great in this photo. We're going to rock it. It's going to be great. And then as soon as they finished the photo, she was like, oh, my God, that stupid bitch. Yeah, it was pretty quick. He put up the nice guy shtick for about 14 seconds, and it fizzled out. Just Quite long quickly. enough for them to get through the photo shoot. And as soon as it was over, it's like, oh my God, I don't have to be nice anymore. I'm done with this thing. Well, 
That's pretty much like how it happened. It's like I contained it as long as I could. Well, I think another little sticking point that really bugged me too was afterwards when he finds out that Courtney had overheard him shit talking her and she's upset by it. He, I, I mean, he chases her around the house, like verbally berating her for being upset. But my favorite sticking point was when he says, Oh, when no one else had like offered you a bed to sleep in, I let you sleep in Who bed with me. Who invited you into his bed? Um, you were the dude literally trying to bang any chick who would get in that bed with you. You were trying so desperately. And now so you're trying desperately. to turn that into turn... like how a sign of your good character. You're a piece of shit. See, it's everything has there's always there's always like a dual motive with him. It's like yeah. oh, I'm going to be nice to you right now, but it's not because I actually want to be nice to you. It's just I have to do this right now to get you to be good in the photo because if you're bad in the photo, you're going to drag me down with you and I don't want that to happen. So we'll do this as long as we have to. As soon as it's over, I'm going to be an asshole again. I'm going to ask you into my bed because all the other girl said no. And you're the one on the floor. And as soon as this doesn't suit me anymore, I'm going to be a total dick to you and humiliate you in front of everybody. And that's And what he happened. even like told Ava to shut the fuck up or something to that effect. Like, cause she just the cool tra- Christian girl? The one with the flower crown. Yeah. Uh, but she was just trying to like comfort yeah, Courtney she and she was like, nice. dude, you, you hurt her feelings. Like she heard what you said and you like told her to stay out of it or shut up or it's whatever. Like, but you're the one who's in here and this girl doesn't want you here. So shouldn't you be the one to leave? Obviously. But you know, he has a very um, abuser vibe to him and I'm not super feeling it, but he's Tyra's baby. Mm. I don't know about all that. That's nonsense. what she said on Instagram. She said it. Bitch said it. Yeah, well, she cried. I don't know why. She's wearing jumpsuits and she cut off her hair to look like a housewife. I don't really know, like a Midwestern housewife that has eight kids. Like, not the good kind in no. any way, shape, or form. No, I'm still mystified by her styling distinctions. Every season, almost. So she wants to make Mike her baby great. He's not a model anyway, because I think, I think it was Tyra herself. I made a comment at the judging panel about how she doesn't know how good of a model he would be without all of his hair. And I concur. I don't think he has anything going for him other than that fucking hair, which is exactly why they bound them with hair. Whereas Courtney has a couple other things that she could learn to accentuate as soon as she finds more of her angles and gets more comfortable. I also think they're trying to make a little something out of her eating slash not eating. Oh, yeah. He's like, did you eat? She's like, you saw me eat. It's like... Well, did you see her keep it down? Like, yeah, it's like and the then vibe him that talking kind of like about how he's like tired developing. of telling her when to eat and stuff, and it's like, I'm like oh but God. you've only been there for like two days. How many times have you really told her this? Probably like once, one too many. I'm like, frankly, they haven't really edited in any shots of any of you eating. So if we're gonna go off of what we see, it looks like none of y'all eat so far. They haven't moved into the kitchen where the twins think that they're all gonna make fabulous meals. Apparently, they're gonna be making like boxed brownies. We saw them in the kitchen. They all got drunk. That was like yeah, the they beginning. Yeah, they made drinks. They didn't and then Bello, Bello's holding on to a giant teddy bear the whole time while he's getting drunk, goes into the confession room, slurs his way through why Devin slash, and he calls him this quote unquote devil. He couldn't remember his name. And, and then, then trips over the equipment on his way and out. breaks a bunch of shit on his way out. How they bleep everything that he says. Yep. Well, I had a feeling that they added a few extra bleeps that were not necessary just to like get the joke across. I'm like, did it... I have no idea because they cut to the freaking top model like logo and they just kept the sound, quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes, the sound going with him with beep, 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 beep. I'm like, okay, is a cop pulling you over or is this guy still saying expletives? I don't know which one of these is true. <laughs> oh my. Well, that was the only time we've seen them in the kitchen, so. Like I said, making drinks, not food. Those twins, I'm like, what? Have you not seen this show? You Clearly. know they're not going to make food here. Clearly they have not. Why else is there craft services? Hello? Hmm. Are we forgetting to talk about anybody? Any couples? Any interesting photos? I didn't see a whole lot of, like, you know, romance. I didn't see any, like... They're trying to make that Mame and Justin storyline happen. I didn't but feel it's any not chemistry there, like, at all. No. I, think, I don't think any of these girls are desperate enough to, like, go have sex with a dude yet. And any of the dudes that are there, at least. Mm-hmm. But we'll see how that, that's got to change. I just loved the preview of next week with um, Hadassah, who was still there, and of <laughs> course living up to Kelly's one accurate assessment of someone's character or talent, when she said she would be trouble, next thing you know, were they talking about shaving her head? Ooh, I sure hope so. They're talking about shaving, was that her, was that her or somebody was like, oh, I'm going to shave my head? Like, she's like, 
So who's she yelling at? She was yelling at one of the other contestants, I think, who probably got on her case for being annoying and whatever else she must be in person. Because I mean, not is there. anybody really surprised that the woman who called a house meeting only to tell everybody, "Don't like stare at me from a bar," is a total fucking bitch and hard to work with? Hard to work with and live with. And doesn't take direction or constructive criticism very well. You don't say. So shocked. Oh my god. Sh- shocking. She probably won't stay around very long, but she kind of reminds me of what was her name? Alasia. Remember Alasia? What From cycle a, was, was that? Cycle or a few cycles ago. She was the one who, like, apparently just did not get modeling at all, but somehow would, like, stuck around to, like, the final, like, five or six, I think, people in the season. I swear her name was Alasia. And they kept, like, even making fun of how, like, obviously she doesn't understand modeling. Like, when she comes in in an outfit that, like, no model would ever wear anywhere, let alone somebody with taste. But they were just like, oh, my God, really? You think that's... Oh, God, just take that off and put... The, that. Just don't do that. Like, every time, like, you just have no clue. And then suddenly, like, this is a gorgeous photo. How did you luck into that? Well, I don't know, but you're going to stick around for a while. And she did. She hung around for a while. I was like, I feel like Hadassah could be this season's Alasia. If she has a good photo, because she did not have a good photo this week at all. Alasia didn't have many good photos either. Hmm. I think it was literally Well, hopefully she doesn't take good. out Dustin in the process, poor dude. I know. He was so adorable. And he also took a lot of really good photos. Yeah, because that like, alternate photo that Tyra showed us, that where she was like, oh, this is the one that like I wanted to use, but Hadassah's face is too dark, so we have to use... One where you look shitty and she looks okay. Yeah, I'm like, you, you didn't even sugarcoat that at all. She's like, basically, we chose the only photo that she looked good in, even though it meant picking one that you didn't look good in. Even though this is only like, one, like maybe one of like five pictures that probably didn't work, the rest of them were actually really good. She just fucked them all up. That's pretty much what happened, because this, like, you know, when we saw the actual shoot, I'm like, he was booching and tooching like nobody's business and giving face and, and then like you said, and they showed that other shot. I'm like, well. He was doing the over the shoulder thing, like, and it was all working. He definitely took all of the critique and lesson or whatever you want to call it to heart. So, but he kind of got screwed up. He still made it through, but I, I don't know. He seems too sweet to last in this competition. I'm getting a vibe that he's not going to last very long unless somehow, you know, that's the story arc that they're crafting. Maybe that's the story arc they're crafting. It starts at the bottom, makes it to the top. Maybe because the top three right now are Devin, Justin, and Lacey. I do think Lacey will end up top three in general. But I'm really hoping Devin does not. Because Devin is I just, don't think so. He's got to have the fall from grace next week, 100%. There's just like, I don't know. I don't like the look. I don't think it works. I, look, it's, you know, it's like not good in person and not good on film. Well, actually, we've only seen him on film. Just one's moving and one's still. But nonetheless, it's none of it's looking good, really, to me. I'm like, I'm not sure what I would buy from this person if they were modeling anything. Yeah, I guess that's a good question. Like, what... Would I mean he would only be editorial? But I wouldn't want to question mark. I'm like I wouldn't. He couldn't buy be it. runway. He does like too much weird facial facial twi- like tweaks, and then he's like touching his face the whole time, and it's just it's not. You're distracted. You don't want to buy the clothes because you're not even looking at it. Exactly. I I just don't see how that would be a successful mo- But you know he's just one of those people that like turned out to be like really good on the show, and then of course. Once they get out into the real modeling world, they're not so great. I mean, even if he does claim to have, like, signed with agencies in six different countries, I'm like, um, where's the work? Didn't you have a portfolio to provide to the well, staffers Well, this is exactly this why show? he's on the show, is that he's not like, You don't even work. have any photos of your previous work from being with six different agencies? Like, how impressive is it that you're with six different agencies and none of them can get you work? The odds of you getting work with six agencies should be really high. Should and be somehow, better than being on the show. And somehow we still haven't seen any of you. Yeah, I mean, just because he didn't go home this week doesn't mean it's not going to happen soon. Yeah, well, you know, dare to dream. <laughs> I think next week will definitely be a dude. You think so? Yeah. I'm like, well, I know I guess it kind of was true this time, but that was true of like a few dudes. So it wasn't just like one guy, like the guy Only who shipped out. Only one important guy got shipped out. And, you know, RIP, JBC. JBC. RIP, JBC. <laughs> We're all about the acronyms up in here on ANTM C22. <laughs> <laughs> we don't got time to say whole words. Oh, my God, but I cannot wait for tie overs. That- tie overs are always the best episode. I swear, it is Christmas in August right now. Yes, Christmas in August. 
Who would have thought? A documentary it? about our love of America's <laughs> next top model. Watching young twenty somethings get their hopes and dreams smashed in one makeover session. Just one. Just one. Oh my god, I can't wait to see what like the word she comes up for these looks too. Because she's gonna. Oh my gosh, I wonder to, like, if it's look. gonna be another treasure hunt like last season. Ooh, that would be fun. Whoever finds the scissors gets the worst haircut or a beard weave. Beard weave, dear lord. Who wants a rash? Uh, is really what she's saying. Who wants to look like they're wearing President Lincoln's beard in like that <laughs> really shitty production of like the night Lincoln was shot? <laughs> of Lincoln off Broadway. Lincoln off Broadway. Ah, uh, well, we can only dream until next week of what these tieovers will look like. We do know that Hadassah loses her shit, so that's a promising uh, feature of next week's episode. I think you know it's possible next week's. I think Rating she might be our up. villain this cycle. Could she be? That'll keep her here for a while, though. Do we want that? Um, I mean, I'm I'm entertained for now until she does something like really shitty or says something like homophobic. Yeah. And then and then I won't want to see her anymore. But maybe she won't do sad. that. Maybe she's no. The maybe one she'll just like... be genuinely kind of like the dumb kind of evil. I mean, she seems like pageant level she evil, says she which like is to not use her brain. <laughs> But clearly from her pageant tricks from the previous episode, like we know that she does like to use her brain just in devious ways, like that horrible Megan chick from that V of those VH1 shows. Oh my gosh. Well, she, really she got, got her come to I her. was gonna say she got her comeuppance for sure, because she had a murderer she, on her show. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if she got to keep all the things that she forced them the, the him to buy her. Probably not. I'm sure the FBI confiscated that as evidence. <gasps> oh, I hope so. Ooh. But nonetheless, she's never going to make it on this show. She's not pretty enough. Mm -mm. But I guess that doesn't matter. She, you don't really have to be pretty. You just we have can to be answer able to the model. question for Megan from Megan Wants a Millionaire if she's going to be on top. No, she's not. She, well, maybe you mm. know, for an extra fifty bucks an hour. Yeah, in a special kind of movie. Special kind of movie. And on that note, make sure you download us every Thursday is when these come out. It took a second. <laughs> It's like, what's tomorrow? Make sure you subscribe and download We Are Rooting For You, or you can also watch slash listen to us on uh, the Gambit Digital YouTube page is also a feasible way. Or, well, as a companion piece, you can always go to Gambit Mag and check out our written reviews for this show and other shows as well. And make sure you follow Gambit Digital on Twitter if yes, you want any do. updates. And I am Samir Roy, signing off for this fabulous Wednesday evening. And I'm Mark Bard. Hope to see you next week so that we can tell Tiffany to be quiet. Oh, yes. Quiet. <laughs> it's quiet time. Uh, and until then, bye. bye.